Hello there, everyone. My name is S Comic Maker, and today I'm going to be drawing some of your OCs in Halloween costumes and testing out some markers. The lovely folks over at Ohuhu recently sent me their 320 set of alcohol markers to review, and let me tell you, I was incredibly excited to try them out. I've reviewed a lot of alcohol markers on this channel, yet whenever anyone asks me what markers I recommend besides expensive Copic ones, I usually point towards these markers because I've seen so many videos of artists using them and enjoying them. I've always heard of Ohuhu as great quality and affordable, but the kicker is that I've never actually tried them myself. So when they reached out, I was over the moon. So let's take a look at these markers and I'll give you my full review after I finish the drawings today. Wow, it's coming. Maker, you can finally put that recommendation to some actual experience. You shush, banana man, I'm doing a thing over here. First and foremost, this set is huge. Absolutely massive. It comes in this big zipper bag with a strap, but honestly, I can't imagine you carrying it around unless you're just putting it in your car or whatever, because it is such a large set. For me, I'll just be keeping it on my desk or under my desk. This set comes in six sections, divided by this squishy fabric divider that is sewn into the bag. Tucked in the back are a couple of little goodies. We have this clear plastic sleeve that they recommend putting behind the paper you'll be coloring on to protect any other paper or your drawings surface from getting marker bleeding all over it. Very handy. Then, just when I was about to whip out some paper and make my own color chart, I see that they've already provided one for me. And, oh, uh, do me a favor and do your best to ignore the spots on these color charts. When I received the package, it was raining really hard at my house. I immediately took the bag of markers out of the box, but I didn't open the bag to check everything because it was only a little damp on the outside, and I wanted to save opening it for this video. Apparently, the papers got wet inside, so there was a bit of mold on it, I guess? Obviously, not the company's fault. Luckily, the markers in the bag were all right, and I still use the chart, so it's all good. There's also a booklet with all the colors in it, as well as some helpful tips on blending and care for your markers. It even tells you that you can flip the marker nib around if it gets flimsy. Nice. Next, I tested the little plastic protective sleeve, and it works really well. I'll be using a bleed-proof paper for my drawings today, but I tested a marker out on some thick cardstock, and these markers are extra juicy, so it definitely bled through. Keep that in mind, and prep your space ahead of time if you need to. The markers themselves are very nice. These are dual-tip markers. One end is a chisel tip nib, and the other is a brush nib, and can I just say, hallelujah to the brush nib! I've tried tried so many marker brands and let me tell you, nothing beats a brush nib. They are nice and flexible for great control, you can use the tiny tip of the brush for fine detail, and they work so much better when you're trying to do some feathery blending. These markers also have this little bit on each side to stop your markers from rolling, which works very well. And this set also comes with a colorless blender which is useful for a lot of things like cleaning up edges, lightening colors, and adding details. One little gripe I had, which isn't major, is the marker setup in the bag. You'll probably want to organize your markers to whatever preference you have, but when swatching the colors on the color chart, the markers were just everywhere. It took me like two hours to go through this color chart and swatch all of these colors because I had to find each individual color. If they were in some kind of color section, it would have been a bit easier, like yellows and oranges in one, or red and purples in one, etc. But I spent forever taking out each section and trying to fill in all the colors as best I could. I ended up organizing them by having each color chart paper in its own section. That way, if I need to grab a color, I can at least know which section to look in instead of trying to find the color I want in a sea of beautiful markers. But it was pretty dang satisfying to sort them all out. Now, I don't know if other Ohuhu sets will come with a color chart like this, but if they don't, I still highly recommend making a color chart yourself. One, because it's so much easier to consult the chart and look for the marker you want to use, and two, because they're going to be a lot of markers that look very different on paper than their cap colors show. Some caps are lighter or darker than the markers themselves, so make sure to swatch them all before using them because you don't want to make a big color mistake on a final piece you're working on. But now that we got our set ready to go, let's get into your characters. I would love for you to stick around and see what drawings I make while using these markers, but if you're here to see what my thoughts are on the quality and performance of these markers, you can skip to this timestamp here. There's also a sweet coupon code 
code you can use around that timestamp, so stick around. Anyway, let's get into it. Once again, I asked you guys on my Discord server to send me some of your lovely original characters. <sighs> I just love your characters so much. You guys are just so dang creative. I had so much fun drawing them as usual, but this time I drew them wearing some really fun Halloween costumes. Because, you know, I had to. It's spooky month law or whatever. So let's start off with Mackenzie. Mackenzie has a few obsessions, including drawing, boys, turtleneck sweaters and leggings, and honeybees. She is 17 years old, right-handed, and very much an extrovert, and is a strawberry blonde. Mackenzie is a character from Kerbo's book that they're writing. Very cool. She's not the main character, but seems to be a good friend to the main heroine. The book takes place on an extremely distant planet from our galaxy in a solar system that has two suns. The planet they live on is named Algidus, Al 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 Algidus? Algidus? <laughs> meaning cold or dark, and Mackenzie lives on the continent called Maceo, in a city named Mesos Oros, and she has a younger brother whose name is Mateo. Hearing about the planet that they live on makes me want to know more about the environment where she lives. And and maybe how it differs from other planets. I thought Kerbo's design was simple and very cute. They asked me to draw Mackenzie wearing a bee costume and I was very happy to oblige. I think she makes a very, very cute bee. Good luck with your story, Kerbo. Next up is this character, which currently doesn't have a name, but their alias is the number 351. Ooh, they got green skin. Let's find out more about them. 351 was once a living being who passed due to falling off of a steep cliffside onto some jet rocks. The result of his death caused his spirit to remain in the mortal realm. The body he currently has possession of has undergone a failed experiment. His spirit was unaware of this once it found his body again. The result of the experiment caused his body to rot and decay, which resulted in becoming a hollowed out husk of what he formerly was when living. A bonus to this unfortunate death was obtaining abilities to summon jagged rocks out of the ground. Large ones to be used as either ground attacks and smaller ones to be used as range attacks. Another ability that 351 one has obtained is psychokinesis to lift opponents and move them at high or low speeds depending on the situation. 351 can also use key blasts and blasters for more ranged attacks. As powerful as he may sound, 351 is actually pretty fragile if he were to be struck in the abdomen. A downside to one of the later transformations is that he's not as fast as before. This specific transformation was made to tank strong blows from any opponent. 351 is excellent when it comes to ranged combat, but when it comes to hand-to-hand hand combat, he's not so good at it. As previously stated, 351 is hollow, where a physical body would be. Anything he eats or drinks doesn't make a mess, but he converts it into energy for his soul. He can also heal wounds that he receives in battle, but there's a catch. Depending on how fatal the wound is, it would take longer for him to heal properly. Man, what a neat character. They asked me if I could draw them as Alucard from the Helsing series, and I gotta say, 351 looks super cool as Alucard. He's rocking the shades and the hat if I do say so myself. Self. What an awesome character with some very interesting abilities. Then we have Grimlo, the Beast Hunter. Look at this little guy. He looks like he means serious business. According to the artist, his story is very simple. Once upon a time, a legendary creature landed down on Earth. That beast is a green cat, powerful green cat named Swirlypuff. That feline may seem innocent and cute, but Grimlo sees right through the act. So he tracks down that fiend and attempts to capture and destroy it, though he fails at it time and time again. Poor Grimlo. He's just living his day to day, trying to do his best, hunting bees, protecting the homies. That dang old green wascally cat gets the best of him. Speaking of green, I ended up drawing a very green Halloween costume on him. I know the artist suggested I draw them as a werewolf, but when I saw him, I was getting major Link vibes. So I drew Grimlo in the outfit that Link wears from A Link to the Past, which just so happens to be one of my favorite Zelda games. <laughs> I gotta say, I think he fits the Link look really well. He might not have his scythe anymore, but a sword doesn't look too bad on him either. I love drawing this little guy. What a cutie. Alrighty, next up we have this super cool character named Kalisha. Her name apparently means woman of strong will and I can definitely see that here. She looks like a super strong and capable person. Kalisha is a 29 year old Jamaican woman who was born on the island of Tuskegee. On this island she learned to fly and was gifted her P-51 Mustang from her father. She now travels the infinite expanse of floating islands growing her crew of sky pirates. Wait a second, that's it? Floating islands? Sky 
pirates? I want to know more. You can't just leave me hanging like that. I need more info. But in all seriousness, I love her design. Her simple color palette is really nice and she looks super tough. It was easy for me to figure out what costume I was going to give her. For Kalisha, I went with Laura Croft from the Tomb Raider games. A badass woman who travels to unknown places and kicks butt? I think it's a perfect fit. This one was definitely one of my favorites to draw. She's just so cool. Now, this one was a super interesting one to work on. I can honestly say I've never drawn anything like this. This character, or well, characters, are William Sunshine slash Buddy Williams. Each face apparently has a different name, though the artist still doesn't have a clue on who's who. Either way, when having a split face like this, he usually doesn't have a human body. So this version with both heads together is the head of his amalgamation form. This guy. Oof, he's a scary looking dude, but I'm also really curious about him. I wonder if he has the whole Jekyll and Hyde thing going for him. I would assume if they have different names per face, then that means that they also have different personalities to go with them. They suggested that I draw them dressed as Two-Face from Batman, and honestly, I had to agree. There isn't a better costume out there for this guy. But there are so many different versions of Two-Face out there, but I went with this super sleek black and white suit. I think he looks very cool in it. Almost Almost makes me forget that there's a face coming out of his face. Okay, never mind. I still very much remember that this is a two-faced man. Let's leave him be and hop on to the next character. Then we have the lovely Claudia. According to the artist, Claudia's story takes place in the 1940s. Claudia is a loving mother and wife, a strict, strong, and firm woman, but is truly soft at heart. She enjoys baking, even though she isn't the best at it, and has a very strong love for the color yellow. Claudia grew up in a big family as a kid. She always felt ostracized from her siblings, feeling the need to rebel and get away from them. This is when she met her husband Giovanni around the late 1910s. Instantly, the two hit it off falling in love. Giovanni was always there for Claudia, and no one dared to say a word about their relationship for being an interracial couple in the 1920s because they knew how powerful his family was. Giovanni was a very quiet, reserved man, growing up very shy as a kid, and Claudia was very drawn to his mysteriousness. She was the one who truly made him shine and brought out his lovable side and confident personality. Giovanni always had access to the nicest restaurants, even without reservations. The two could go anywhere together and do anything they'd like in the blink of an eye because because he had lots of connections. The two decided to get illegally married in 1923, the same year that Giovanni's mother had passed away. Claudia's parents never approved of the two's relationship, and this was their final straw, sadly disowning her for being with Giovanni all because of his race, her being black and him being white. She sacrificed everything for him, just to be with him, because she really, really loved him. Claudia and Giovanni had two sons in 1924 and 1925, Graziano and Chandler. Claudia always felt like she messed up raising her sons. The relationship always felt very distant. Growing up, both sons began to feel a negative way towards their parents. Their trust with their parents became very bad once they found out the true nature in life that their mother and father had lived. In 1941 is when they had their daughter, Mia. Claudia ended up taking a very overprotective role as the mother, shielding her daughter away from the horrible world. She didn't want to mess up like she did with her sons. She couldn't fail Mia. Though she didn't realize that she was being too overprotective, truly hurting her daughter. She didn't want to put Mia through such a rough life. She didn't want her daughter being a victim of harassment, so she shielded her, trying to be the big protective mama bear. Claudia would do anything for her family, even if she accidentally causes more harm than good. Wow, I feel like I just stepped out of a two hour movie, or binged like a whole Netflix series. Like, in a good way, I promise. I love how detailed all these story elements are, and it really made me feel like I got to know Claudia a lot. For her costume, I ended up taking the mama bear thing a little too literal and made her an actual mama bear. I think she would absolutely rock this costume, considering how overbearing she is. Eh? Okay. I figured she would make her daughter Mia dress like a baby bear as well. Even if she doesn't like it, I think they would look super cute together. Next up, we have the character Mobloxy. I realized a bit too late that this isn't actually how they dress and that this is in fact them in a Halloween costume, but it's too late to change it now. 
Mobloxy is a star child who is seen usually wearing a blue red striped propeller hat with brown shoes, yellow gloves, and a black long sleeve shirt. He is a living star in the form of a human boy who was born in the skies of Star Heaven, but was sent to Earth for an emergency due to an attack from the Goblin Clan. The Goblin Clan killing his parents and most of his star people. So now he lives a human life on Earth, destined that one day he will soon grow up to be a star warrior and protect the Earth from menaces such as the Goblin Clan. What a sad story for such a cute little guy. Despite everything he's gone through, he seems to have a good attitude about him. For this drawing, I decided to draw Mobloxy dressed as another character that's dressed up, if that makes sense. But I drew him dressed as Wirt from Over the Garden Wall. I figured that he would fit the costume pretty well, and I gotta say, he looks super cute. He's rocking the red pointy hat for sure. Then we have the super cute and fluffy Annie. Annie is a Mexican African American cat who just moved from around the country to Oki Oats from Chicken Little. She is a smart cat and a hard worker, a little bit of a perfectionist. However, because she moves a lot, it's hard for her to make friends or rather keep them. So when she meets Abby, Foxy, and later on Goosey, she feels a connection with them and lets go of her fear and decides that they're her best friends. Interesting, a Chicken Little original character. I gotta say that's a first for me seeing that, but I love her. The artist provided me with a reference image of a witch, so I decided to go with the alpha design, but change it up a little bit by using the same color palette that Annie has in her reference image and incorporating it into her costume. I think it turned out to be a good way to tie the character back to their original outfit, and the pastels look super cute on a witch as well. I don't know if she could perform magic for real in the Chicken Little universe, but Annie will look super cute trying. Last but not least, we have another very cute character. This is Lily, and she is a zombie mushroom girl. Currently, the world she's in is an apocalypse, so she's just trying to find people like her. So far, she's made two friends. Dude, good for you, Lily. She's rather cheerful, and she can't remember her life before dying, but she's also very loyal and protective. Aw, what a sweet thing. I gotta say, I love the design and color palette for the reference images on this one. A little mushroom zombie girl? Dang. That's really cute. But speaking of mushrooms, as you can probably tell from what I've already started drawing here, I had to draw her as Toadette. You know, she had the whole mushroom thing going for her, and that was just so stinking cute. I had to. I gotta say, she nails the look. Equally as cute before, even with a mushroom three times the size of the one that was on her head. <laughs> Woo! What a wonderful selection of characters that we've dressed up today. I really wish I had the time to do more, especially since you guys sent in so many awesome ones, but nine isn't too bad. If you want to participate in something like this, then worry not. I'll be drawing some more characters in Halloween costumes during my Halloween request stream on October 30th at 6.30 p.m. EST, so if you want a chance at being selected, then be sure to come by. But now that we've wrapped up, what do I think of these markers? Honestly, they're pretty amazing. As always, I only review things if I'm allowed to give my honest opinion on them, and after waiting for so long to try these out, they really did live up to my expectations. The colors are rich and vibrant, they lay down on paper really smooth and even, they blend well, and there's a really wide variety of markers to choose from. One of the things I usually worry about with sets like this is the ability to replace markers. If there are certain colors that you use frequently and they run out, do you have the ability to replace the one color or do you have to buy the whole set again? Well, according to the Ohuhu website, they do have some colors that you can buy as a single color, but the options to choose from are pretty limited, so keep that in mind. Also, make sure if you're on the site that you're careful about which markers you're looking at. They have fine tip and brush tip markers. If you're looking into getting markers like the ones that I use today, make sure you're looking at brush tip markers specifically. Honestly, under $2 per marker is amazing for the quality of these. But but if that's too pricey, they do have smaller sets of 216, 168, 72, etc. And they also have specific grayscale sets and skin tone sets too, if the big boy set is too much. Ohuhu has also provided me with a 10% off code that you can use to save yourself a little bit more. So be sure to use Ohuhu Art 10 if you decide to give these a try. Ohuhu also wanted to give one of my viewers an opportunity to win their Ohuhu 48 pastel color set 
episode for free. So if you would like a chance at winning, here's what you have to do. One, subscribe to my channel as Comic Maker if you haven't already. Two, follow at Ohuhu Art, which is their official Instagram page, which I will link in the description. Three, like this video and comment on what kind of Ohuhu set you would like to try. The pastels, grayscale sets, skin tones, or one of the sets with tons of colors. Or you can leave a comment about one of the characters that I talked about in this video. The giveaway opens from October 21st, 2022 to midnight GMT on Halloween, October 31st, 2022. This giveaway is open to the whole world. The winner will be announced by me on the 3rd of November, 2022. I'll respond to the winner's comment on this video, so be sure to be on the lookout for a reply from me saying, congrats, you are the winner of the Ohuhu 48 pastel color set. Once I receive a response, I'll provide you with the info to get you your markers. So good luck to you all. All the links and things that you need will be in the description, as well as an affiliate link for these markers specifically. Affiliate links do help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you so much to Ohuhu for sending me these markers. They were honestly a joy to work with, and it was so much fun coloring everyone's characters with these markers. And thank you to everyone who submitted characters again. I always have fun reading about all of your sweet, sweet babies. But that's it for this one, guys. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye, guys.